फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट मिस्टर डेप्यूटी स्पीकर सर आई एम वेरी ग्लैड दैट आई हैव द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू टेक पार्ट इन द डिस्कशन ऑन द डिमांड्स फॉर ग्रांट्स इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लेबर आई एम वेरी हैप्पी वी हैव गोट अ वेरी गुड लेबर मिनिस्टर बट I do not know whether he is able to take all the steps necessary to improve the labor situation in this country at this critical moment the industrial policy resolution of 1956 clearly mentions that in the process of rapid industrial development labor assumes a vital role to establish a socialistic pattern of society the main problems facing the working class are of getting adequate wages essential commodities at prices they can afford some short of shelter and cloth the government minimum needs program has hardly reached the working class the vast majority of laborers are unable to make both ends meet the government has mentioned endlessly on the question of evolving a national wage policy or an integrated wages income prices policy in the labor ministers conference some time back it was suggested that steps should be taken to enforce the minimum wages in the different industries it was also suggested that non implementation of minimum wages should be declared as a cognizable offence and the offenders should be arrested however it had been agreed at the conference that more deterrent punishment should be given to the offenders and that the act should be amended suitably necessary changes should have been made in the central legislation by this time the industrial disputes act had become outdated and it should be completely overhauled it has been claimed that the emergency has brought discipline among laborers and the production has been increased yes it is a fact but the laborers are forced to work and they are forced not to take part in the trade union activities the trade union rights have been completely taken away from the labor but sir i want to impress upon the minister that motivations for work should not be imposed from outside but it should come from within a contented labor force is an asset to the development of industries you have taken away the permitted bonus some time back this parliament passed an act to fix the minimum bonus at 8.33% but the same act was adversely amended 
by the same parliament some time ago bonus was accepted by this government as a deferred wage but the same government has reversed the conception of bonus and this government says that bonus is a deferred wage but it is connected with production and productivity but what about the owners of industries do you know how much have they reduced the dearness allowance of the workers now a days not only that a number of companies have been held guilty for failure to deposit the provident fund money and also for mishandling the amount due to employees every year nearly 2 lakh employees come under the purview of the scheme the total number of employees covered by the scheme in the year 1995-96 was 61 lakh and it was 75 lakhs in the year 1996-97 whereas the average refunds amount to rupees 100 to 125 crores the gross contribution to the fund was expected to reach rupees 58 crores in 1995-96 from rupees 51 in 1996-97 whereas the refunds to the employers or an average is rupees 10 to 12 crores naturally such a situation calls for stringent regulation and control over the operation and administration of funds if the administration of the provident fund scheme at various levels has to be really advantageous to the employees there should naturally be regional offices which could directly deal with members of the fund who go in for advances loans etc the present situation has offered an opportunity for the government to make necessary meaningful changes in a number of legislative measures which seek to protect and regulate the rights and working conditions of industrial workers and other employees in fact several clauses of the legislative measures have little relevance to the present day conditions regarding the apprenticeship act once our prime minister said in the state labor ministers conference that the apprenticeship act had not been implemented vigorously it had not been given a trial utilization of apprenticeship opportunity or filling such vacancies has not been uniform in all the state creation of skilled manpower has lagged behind the limits of possibilities so the more important point is 
what is to be done even more important is that there is a new sense of urgency and a will to get things done with regard to this the basic problem relates neither to the number of apprentices nor to the value of their stipends we hope that the government shall do its best to alleviate the feelings of labor and take steps for that stop